Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and beyond. This week, the first and second families honored Veterans Day. The president traveled to New Orleans and to Cleveland to speak on the importance of infrastructure to job creation. Signed the EpiPen Law, discussed immigration reform with faith leaders, and attended the fifth annual Tribal Nations Conference. That's November 8th to November 14th, or We Will Stand By Your Side. The president kicked off this West Wing week Big Easy style, traveling to the port of New Orleans, one of the busiest port complexes in the world, moving millions of tons of steel, chemicals, fuel, and food every year. The port also handles much of the country's coffee. Which means you're responsible for keeping the White House awake at all times. So we're working on new trade deals that will mean more jobs for our workers and more business for ports like this one. Meanwhile, Dr. Jill Biden was meeting with Army veteran Stephen Ferraro, the one millionth beneficiary of the post-9-11 GI Bill, to celebrate and recognize the significant impact it has had in helping service members, veterans, and their families obtain a quality education and a good-paying job. This Veterans Day, the President, joined by the Vice President, the First Lady, and Dr. Biden, participated in a wreath-laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery, where he spoke of the devoted service that our veterans have given us, meaning every mission this country has asked of them. This is how we'll be judged not just by how well we care for our troops in battle, but how we treat them when they come home and by the America we build together. On Tuesday, the president met with a group of tribal leaders ahead of his visit to the Tribal Nations Conference on Wednesday. Then he traveled across town to Molly Malone's on Barracks Row, where he and the vice president joined five active duty service members to thank these men and women for their service and to hear directly from them before meeting with the combatant commanders and military leadership later that day. Meanwhile, the First Lady traveled to Bell Multicultural High School in Washington, D.C. Here, the First Lady expanded upon her focus on youth empowerment and education, in particular working to achieve the President's North Star goal, that by the year 2020, America will once again have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world. That afternoon, the President nominated Tim Massett as chairman of the CFTC, that's the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. It's an odd acronym, but a good reminder of the agencies and their employees who are working hard every day to implement the Wall Street reform bill the president signed into law during his first term in office. On Wednesday, the president and vice president met with faith leaders from across the country to discuss their shared commitment to passing common sense immigration reform. The leaders discussed the impact the broken immigration system is having on families and their congregations and pledged to continue pressuring Republicans in Congress to swiftly pass the measure. The only thing that is preventing us from getting this done right now is, uh, is politics. Later, the president signed into law the School Access to Emergency Epinephrine Act, which will encourage schools to plan for severe asthma attacks and allergic reactions and provide millions of families with greater peace of mind. Before traveling to the Department of Interior to speak at the fifth Tribal Nations Conference, where more than 300 tribal nations were represented. On Thursday morning, the president went to the James A. Brady press briefing room, where he talked about efforts to strengthen the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. We're going to get it right, and the Affordable Care Act is going to work for the American people. That afternoon, the president boarded Air Force One and traveled to America's comeback city, Cleveland, Ohio. While he was there, he toured one of the biggest steel plants in America. Hello. Uh, hold on. It's for you, George and spoke on the importance of supporting American manufacturing, building a 21st century economy, and creating more middle-class jobs right here at home. So, all of you are an example of what we do when we put our minds to it. When we work at it, we know we can get to a better place. And we can restore some security to a middle class that, that was forged in plants just like this one, and keep giving ladders of opportunity for folks who are willing to work hard to get into the middle class. That's what I'm about. That's what this plant's about. I'm proud to be with you. Meanwhile, down south in the Sunshine State, the First Lady was delivering the keynote address at Disney's first ever Veterans Institute workshop at Walt Disney World Resort. The event brought together business experts, government officials, veterans, and leaders from nonprofit veteran service organizations to share experiences and best practices for making a successful transition from the military to the civilian workforce. To find out more information on any of these POTUS, V POTUS, FLOTUS, and Dr. B events, Go to whitehouse.gov, and thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. It's wet. It's a little wet out here.